Hello, my friends, Ezra Levant here. Let me check what time it is. It's 4.08 p.m. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time, which tells you that I'm in London in the United Kingdom. I have just stepped into a vehicle outside the Royal Courts of Justice, at which the High Court is located, and I am now driving to Heathrow. Hopefully I'll make my flight, though with uh, uh, the traffic the way it is in this country, you never know. Uh, the reason I was in London is the reason I'm usually in London, which is to cover the latest litigation involving our friend Tommy Robinson. When I was last out here, I was actually in Luton, which is Tommy's hometown, um, about 45 minutes north of London, an hour north. And that was when the police and prosecution were suing Tommy to ban him from attending any football game in the United Kingdom, or as they call it here, uh, they call it football, what we call in North America, soccer. I thought that was a bizarre case. It was the um, Crown Prosecution Service, it was the police, it was literally the state deciding that Tommy Robinson was the most dangerous person um, because he goes to those uh, football games and we better stop that. You got 20, 23,000 jihadis uh, running around this country according to um, MI5, MI6, one of those MIs. Uh, but Tommy Robinson going to football games was what they were prosecuting for. That's what I was doing in Luton about a month ago. But a couple of days ago, Tommy Robinson uh, called me up and said, as I've got this civil litigation against me at the high court, it's a defamation case where a young Syrian migrant who's a student um, purportedly attacked a British girl at school. So it's a little bit bumpy, so the camera's jiggling around. So Tommy uh, reported on this, as he says, he took the other side of the story. And um, the kid, his name is Jamal, sued Tommy for a defamation. And um, that's what we were in court for today, but we weren't here for a uh, substantive hearing. Um, we didn't uh, actually get into the uh, substance of the case. We didn't hear any witnesses. There was no testimony. What it was instead was the lawyers, when they talked about one of the issues regarding the witnesses uh, for about 10 minutes, but then for about an hour and a half, the lawyers talked with each other and with the judge about their fees. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Uh, I'm a former lawyer myself, and of course I've been involved in litigation, both uh, giving and receiving in uh, North America, and even in uh, other countries, but I have never seen a th thing like I saw today. So the, the litigation is in its early stages. A trial has not happened yet, and yet there were five lawyers in the room and they were calling for more lawyers. Uh, there was a proposal to have seven lawyers on this case. And the lawyers were talking with each other and with a judge called the master about what their fees would be. And they were haggling. And of course the fees. So whatever Jamal's lawyer got, Tommy's lawyer wanted. So it was basically Tommy and even Jamal they really weren't the subject of the conversation today. Uh, it was about the lawyers making sure they got well paid. Um, it was about 10 minutes about the case. Uh, Tommy Robinson himself uh, had told me before, uh, it was master's chambers, as it was master's chambers, as they say. Um, and this master, Barbara Montaigne is her name, uh, is also she also has a very fancy title, an ancient title called the Queen's Remembrancer, which I have never heard, but I googled it and it looks very interesting. So we were all in this little office of this kind of a judge called a master, and it was very small and very intimate. It was really a big desk, and the senior lawyers were right up against the desk across from the judge, and then there was another row of um, three more lawyers and Tommy. And then there was me, one other journalist from a alt-left uh, news agency called Press Association, a, a Tommy supporter, and then a security guy. So it was very, very small in there. 
It's only less than a dozen people. Um, and for 90 minutes, the lawyer said, well, I want to get paid for this. I want to get paid for that. And he shouldn't be able to bill for this. And he shouldn't be able to bill for that. And they were all gathered for the feast. And it was really three lawyers talking about seven lawyers getting paid. And when I say three lawyers, I am including the master because of course she's a former lawyer, is a lawyer. Um, it was quite something. And the figures they were coming up with were so staggeringly large. Like I say, I've been involved in litigation uh, in various jurisdictions, never happy. But if I, and I'm just, there were so many numbers thrown out, but the final number that the master approved for the plaintiffs, um, I, I don't remember it in pounds, I converted it immediately to Canadian dollars because that's what I understand. Uh, it was 580,000 Canadian dollars. I tweeted it, so forgive me if I'm not 100% accurate here. There were so many numbers thrown out. You can check my uh, Twitter feed, which is twitter.com slash Ezra Levant for the exactitudes. Um, so more than half a million for the plaintiff's lawyers if this thing goes all the way and if they win. I can assure you, although I shouldn't say that now because uh, this is making me question what I thought I knew about the British legal system, uh, that Jamal will not get that amount of money if he wins. And I don't know if he'll win at all. But um, this is a feast for lawyers. There were five lawyers in the room and there was uh, a suggestion that there ought to be seven lawyers at trial. And I guess that's just how it is. <clears throat> what they, the barrister is the one who argues in the court and the solicitor is the one who does the groundwork. Um, in Canada and the United States, there is no distinction. You're a lawyer, just a lawyer. You do all sorts of work. I can see now why they have that split profession uh, so they can have more people milking the cow. So they can have more piggies at the trough. And listen, I'm sure all the lawyers in the room were outstanding lawyers. But I have just never in my life seen such insane bills on both sides. And I've never seen the money being sorted out as the first issue. And then the legal case itself comes later. I mean, in Canada, which I'm most familiar with, with is that once a case is all done, the lawyers can then say to the judge, well, here's how it went. We want a little bit for this and we want a little bit for that. And typically, even the winning side gets just a fraction of what they spent, unless the behavior by the other side was so egregious, you just get partial fees. But here, the amount of money they were getting approved in advance was staggering. Just, I've just never seen anything like it. And the fact that the lawyers were all discussing this and pleading their own cases to a judge they weren't pleading Jamal's case or Tommy's case. The lawyers were pleading their own case, the case of how much they should get paid. I have to tell you, I'm slightly demoralized by the whole thing and more than slightly grossed out. Um, and I guess that goes to what this lawsuit's really about. The process is the punishment. Um, this defamation case is not about a young Syrian migrant whose reputation was harmed. I don't believe that's what this case is about. I believe it's about throwing anything at Tommy and seeing what'll stick. I mean, Tommy's not a threat to the football games either, but they're prosecuting him there. They'll throw literally anything they can at him. And when I say they, I mean the establishment or uh, this uh, plaintiff's law firm. It's just incredible. So it was about just, just slightly less than a two hour hearing today. There was a 10 or 15 minute break where the master uh, went through things. The final result was uh, her coming up with those dollar figures. But like I say, we didn't even get into any of the substance. We didn't get uh, into Tommy's main objection, which is he doesn't want to turn over the identity of his witnesses to the plaintiffs because he's worried they'll be abused, threatened, etc. Um, so Tommy told me, uh, and I, this, I think this um, video should be up at tommytrial.com, if not already, it should be up shortly. I talked to Tommy before the case and he said he's got um, uh, students ready to testify, a teacher ready to testify. He says he's got uh, internal records from the school that all show that this kid was indeed a bully. He's not a saint. 
That's Tommy's contention. He's pleading truth as his defense. Um, so we didn't get into any of that today. There were, there, for maybe 10 minutes, they talked about the fact that therefore Tommy wants his witnesses to be kept confidential from uh, the plaintiffs, not from the judge. The judge will obviously be able to know who they are, etc. But he wants them kept confidential from the public and also from the plaintiff's lawyers. And the reason for that we didn't get into today, but uh, I know why, having talked to Tommy and seen uh, his videos and whatnot, the lawyers involved sent an insane Antifa street thug to serve papers on Tommy at his family home, and they live streamed it, thus revealing his home location. So this wasn't that Jamal Syrian kid anymore. It was the law firm that's against Tommy the law firm, instead of sending what's called a process server or a private detective or even a courier or a messenger to serve the lawsuit on Tommy, the law firm hired a madman. Um, oh, you can see it on my other video at TommyTrial.com. Some wild guy who threatened Tommy, threatened Tommy's wife and kids and live streamed the visit to Tommy's confidential home location. So Tommy, you can see why Tommy doesn't want to give the identity of these child witnesses to the law firm itself because of their abusive conduct so far. And I understand that the law society or the benchers or whatever they call it over here in the UK is looking into this law firm. And me, I stuck around longer than I should because I, I was told the whole thing would only go for 90 minutes and I, I should have been able to make my flight, but it went 45 minutes actually later than, uh, I think the whole thing went for two hours and 15 minutes instead of nine, 90 minutes. And hopefully we can make up time on the road. I've already checked in and whatnot. So, um, oh, and I see just as we're here, Tommy just sent me a voice message, which I obviously can't listen to on the same phone as I'm doing uh, this live stream. Uh, I talked to Tommy a bit about it. I won't get into the uh, confidential nature of our discussions, but um, he obviously agrees that this is the lawfare. The process is the punishment, and they're just throwing anything at him, including the kitchen sink, seeing what'll stick. Uh, as I say, there was only one other reporter in the room, uh, a reporter for an extremist news agency called Press Association. They probably wouldn't call themselves extremists, they probably call themselves mainstream and maybe they are on some issues but i've seen their misconduct on on tommy reported so frankly i i don't believe a word they say i mean it was a pretty bland and boring uh hearing it wasn't even a hearing today it was a meeting really so i'm not even sure how how it could be mischaracterized but if it could if they can find a way i'm sure they will anyways that's my report um i think i'll sign off because i'm going to check to see what that message from tommy was uh it might just be him saying goodbye um, cause I did have to leave hastily. Uh, if there's something really newsworthy, I'll strike up another live stream and tell you, but otherwise let me conclude my report by saying I'm very disappointed, not in the substance of this case, which was not moved forward one inch today. I'm very disappointed in the truth about the British legal system where the lawyers come first, the lawyers get paid first. The most important thing to the lawyers is getting paid and lawyers on both sides. And the fact that we spent really two hours and 15 minutes today making sure the lawyers got well fed. And I'm serious, there were five lawyers in the room, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and I think there was a proposal to have seven at the, at the case. Like it's, that makes no sense other than in the UK where the laws obviously run for the benefit of the lawyers, not the people, not for Jamal, uh, the plaintiff, even if he wins, let's say if he wins. Um, it really isn't his case, is it? It's his lawyer's case. They're just going to get so rich off it. I'm very frustrated by that, and I'm um, a little bit disillusioned about justice here. And I conclude with what I said in one of my last tweets today, which is, this is the price you pay in a jurisdiction with no First Amendment. Because what Tommy said on his video would absolutely not be uh, something subject to litigation in America. And if someone filed a nuisance suit, it would be thrown out right away. Uh, but in the UK and to an extent in Canada, there's a free speech tax and it's only paid by conservatives, by the way. I'm unaware of conservatives suing liberals in nuisance suits to, to shut them up for political purposes, as I believe is being done to Tommy. It's only the other way. Anyway, so that's my report. Um, 
you can see all my live tweets at Ezra Levant, sorry, twitter.com slash Ezra Levant. I did interview Tommy for about five minutes before court. You can find that at tommytrial.com. I am racing to the airport now, and I sure hope I get there on time. No guarantee, though. Um, if you want to help cover the cost of my flight, I'd be very grateful if you would. I paid about 1400 bucks for the flight, plus uh, cab fare each way and uh, in Toronto also. Altogether, it'll be just under 2000 bucks Canadian. It's about 1200 British pounds. Um, now that I see what lawyers charge here, I'm obviously in the wrong business. All right, folks, uh, that's it for today from the streets of London. Until next time, on behalf of all of us at Rebel World Headquarters, to you at home and around the world, goodbye and keep fighting for freedom. <laughs>